What's up guys, out here again at CM Auto House. We are going to do a how-to video on valve adjustment. So I have the cam covers off the engine, the engines at TDC on the intake stroke. You can tell that because the dots on the cam gears are facing up. If they were facing down, then they, it would be TDC on the exhaust stroke. So make sure you have your service manual out and page EM6, that's where you get your valve adjustment specs. So here's the specs. We're going to look at the cold specs. I don't, um, so TDC intake stroke, we'll be checking these. We'll be checking the valve clearance for these ones. I already checked the valve clearance last time. So here's some of my notes, and then we have a whole bunch of shims ready to go. Thank you to Z1 Enterprises. These are motorcycle shims, they'll work for a car. They're just 25 millimeters, and then each of them come in different sizes. So like, um, they sell them by the, by the five mil differences. So 290, 285, 280. So our valve clearance spec for the intake and exhaust, the minimum is going to be 0.15 mil all the way up to 0.30 mil. So I have a set of feeler gauges from 0.152 all the way up to 0.330. And um, I bent these at the end to help you out feel the uh, valve clearance. So I already know number one the intake valve that one's going to be too loose and i'll just show you guys the maximum spec is 0.25 millimeters i'm going to put my 0.305 and and then you can see this thing's still really loose when you use feeler gauges they they usually say it's the feeling of a hot knife through butter. But if I can put the over the size spec feeler gauge in here, for sure it's too loose. So this means this valve shim is too thin for this. We need to put a thicker valve shim in there. So let me set up the GoPro and I'll show you how my valve shim tool works to compress the bucket. So you'll need these two guys to do valve adjustment. Um, I think I bought these as like a set. But here's the SR, here's the SP tools part number. This holds the bucket down. And then this guy compresses the bucket. So I'll go set up the GoPro and then I'll show you guys how we compress the bucket so we can take the shim out of there. And we'll put in a, a bigger shim. So this circle tool, you want to get it on the, the other side of the cam and this will compress the bucket. There's a notch right here. You want it to uh, aim out towards you so you can put your screwdriver or whatever tool in there and uh, flick the bucket up and take it out. So, all right, oh, watch out for the camera. Got it. All right, cool. So I have the bucket compressed. Then this thing's double-sided. Um, I can tell it's this side because this side's more worn. Um, but yeah, you'll have to figure out which side of this tool you're gonna use. And this will hold down the bucket. So I'm going from the back side of the cam. And I'm just gonna put this thing. All right, so if we go to the other side, you can come to my side. And you can see the the bucket, yeah, if you can see the bucket's uh, compressed. And then, um, so you'll put the screwdriver, that's why we line up that notch. So, you can use a magnet. It's tough because then the magnet sticks to everything metal. Um, as long as you're not like, Gorilla gripping that shim, you should be fine with just some regular needle nose. All right, so there we go. Cool. 
All right, so I put my 275 shim in there. Um, when I got the shim in, I'll usually turn the bucket, make sure everything moves freely still. Um, it's a good idea, um, even with some light lube like WD-40, to lube up the shims before you put them in there. So, our spec, is, our large end of the spec for the intake valve is 0.25. I'm gonna grab my 0.25 feeler gauge and put it in there. And yeah, if you 0.25 fits in there. Um, feeler gauge, the feeling of a feeler gauge can be subjective and, and tough. It takes some experience. There's one other way I like to do, so I will get I will get the next size feeler gauge up. So that's a 0.279. And then if we check this out, a 0.279 does not fit in here. So we know that. So that we can confirm that um, 0.25, that's probably the, the correct clearance if you can't put the next size up feeler gauge in there so in my experience my personal strategy for doing valve clearance is to always aim for the larger side of the spec so this type of so this type of valve clearance setup where it's like bucket shim shim over bucket shim under bucket as you you put miles or as you drive the car the clearance is only going to get tighter so um, i always aim for the larger end of the spec because this is only get tighter um, if you if you set the clearances at the lower end of the spec and they got tighter so the valves get hung open and for sure like when i worked on subarus um, you could tell from the freeze frame a cold misfire, and then you could, and then you could um, check the valve clearance, and yeah, it's probably too tight. So that's how you would know the valves are tight is like cold misfire. That would be like one indication. So I always aim for the large end of the spec. Too tight, it's gonna miss. Um, if you're at the large end, it might make some some noise, but they're only gonna get tighter, and the the top end of the spec is still within spec also. So I'm not going to demonstrate all 16 valves. I'm just showing you guys um, how I do valve adjustment. They, in the service manual, there's this complicated formula that has never worked for me before. So for me, it's kind of like, um, what's the current valve clearance with the feeler gauges? what size shim is there and then i'll decide okay i need a little bit bigger shim or i need a lot bigger shim so i'll put in like a you know one size bigger check it again um you can do some math right like 0.52 clearance and then you know maybe i need to go five or ten mil um bigger shim all right just finished the valve adjustment on this guy um these two came out of the exhaust side and you can see um, all the hardenings worn off of these shims so um, that's one thing the valve clearance was way too much on these and you can see there's like physical damage so these guys are going in the trash um, thank you guys for watching if you have any questions please leave something in the comments remember to like and subscribe listen to the auto house podcast and make sure to check out the website for stickers and we have a patreon page now all right thanks again you guys